drugs may be a problem in our society. However, reinstitutionizing the death penalty is the wrong way to go. They claim that this works as an effective deterrent to ensure that we scare individuals and to ensure that they are set off drugs. However, we have to understand that the deterrence of death penalty only works when individuals are sure that they actually will be prosecuted, that they will receive the death penalty. But if we look at the reality that exists in the Philippines today, this isn't the case. Our rate of prosecution is so low that individuals, even if they are jailed, are highly unlikely to face trials. And even if they are, it will take months and years to come. And even in the instance that they do face trial, if we look at the rate of which we actually execute death penalty, we have a 71% judicial error rate. That means, even if we implement the death penalty, we are unlikely to implement it effectively enough to serve as the deterrent that they want. But let's say it does serve as a deterrent, why do we think it's still bad? Because even if it is a deterrent, all we're doing is replacing one type of fear, which is the fear of drugs, with another type of fear. The fear that the police are going to come and they're going to essentially bring you to jail and have the death penalty upon you. Because if we look at it today, operations like Operation Tokang or the type that try to stop individuals from committing drugs usually do so out of simple accusations that people are drug dealers. And therefore, individuals on the ground, rural individuals who might not have access to things like lawyers or natural protective mechanisms are still going to be afraid of going out, are still going to be afraid essentially because if the police catch them, for example, if someone wrongfully accuses them of doing drugs, they are just as dead as the individuals who are guilty, and that's not the world we want to live in. Which is why, essentially, we believe that the reinstitution of the death penalty harms Philippine businesses, whether they are small to medium enterprises or large enterprises, and we would rather they simply improve current judicial systems and current police implementation to ensure safety. Two reasons why it's not in the interest of businesses. First is essentially because it harms trade. In status quo right now, we are greatly benefited by systems such as the general system of preference, which allows us to ensure that goods, 6,274 goods, can enter duty-free into areas like the European Union, for example. And a lot of these goods are focused on the agricultural sector, things like coconut oil, or coconut water, or coconut everything. The point is that this is a 12.8 billion dollar trade that a lot of the times directly affects the businesses and the agricultural sector of individuals on the ground. The problem is, these types of benefits that we are currently enjoying today are highly dependent on our ability to keep our human rights records straight, our ability to ensure that we adhere to the treaties and the second option protocol that we as the Philippines are a signatory to. The harm, if ever, we do reinstitutionalize the death penalty. Is, one, we essentially risk losing the benefit state, our GSP status, and this essentially trickles down to over 200,000 agricultural jobs being lost. These are people in the rural areas, people they wanted to protect, to protect, now being unemployed and now being essentially jobless and not having any kind of option in what to turn to. We think that being economically stable is one of the steps to ensure that you know what, you don't fall into drugs, that you are able to have a stable life. But when you rip the rug out from under these individuals, all the more we essentially lead them towards that downward spiral. That's why if we want to ensure we that these benefits stay, we don't want to reinstitutionalize the death penalty. But the second reason is essentially because it ruins investor confidence in the Philippines. The second option protocol in the ICCPR aims for the abolishment of death penalty, and it's not something you can simply just withdraw to on no whim. That's why we think it's an institutional reflection of, exact, of one, the government's unwillingness to keep its commitments, but two, it's all the more willingness to simply backtrack from any of the treaties or its promises that are absolutely made. It is a message that you cannot trust the words of the Philippine government when it is just willing to pull out from things that it has signed with them to. And this is essentially bad because Philippine business a lot of the time benefits from collaborations and from partnerships with foreign businesses. It benefits from partnerships with foreign institutions. However, if these foreign institutions do not feel safe and do not think that they can trust the government when they 
only enter into business and they are unlikely to do so. This essentially lessens our opportunity to expand, to grow our businesses, and to ensure that the Philippine economy does grow. Which is why, for all these reasons, we'd rather not reinstitutionalize the death penalty. Thank you.